All right, as you saw from the thumbnail, I am out of room for Madam Glam. So I am going to have to do some rearranging here in my room. And I don't know, do something else with all my plates. Um, because I have more shelves that I could make room. I've got a little more room here I just made. Um, and I think I can do more up here. But this whole shelf right here with all the plates, I think I'm just going to have to like do a seasonal kind of thing and put the plates away and not have them out handy like I'd like. But I also have all this shelf, but it is full of all my indie brand regular straight up polishes. All right. So I kind of got Tara with Bases Loaded Lacquer hooked on a gel overlay. And she sent me a bunch of questions. So um, this is something I think everybody's always asking. So I'm going to do a video. So don't ask me anymore. Just watch the video, okay? So here's what she sent me. Here's what she texted me. I printed it off. Best hand files, grits, and the difference between the grits. The lower the grit is going to be, so an 80 is as low as I use. An 80 is going to be a little coarse. I think my the best thing for me to do is just to go through the questions one by one, read them all to you. Um, so she wants to know the best hand files and grits and the difference between the grits, the best e-files, the best sanding bands, the grits, and the difference between the grits, um, safety bands, shape, grit, and difference between them, <laughs> best flame bits, best diamond bits, best buffers, <laughs> best brushes, liner striping detail, etc., little fingers how when and how to use all of the above she's not asking much best techniques and how to's how to hold the client's hands and fingers when to buff off the shiny surface before applying a certain gels or polishes when to keep the sticky layer intact before moving on to certain gel polishes nail art techniques etc and put all that shit into one video please okay tara all right, we're gonna use Freaky Fran here. Just need one finger. I'm not gonna go through a lot of this in detail. I'm just gonna hit the high points. So I have these files that I got from um, Amazon, and or oh, maybe this these were from AliExpress. Um, I don't think these are great. They're okay, but I bought a whole bunch of them, so I'm using them. Um, this is a 240, which is pretty fine. Usually you get a an 80 on one side and a 120 on the other. The 80, I feel like it's, it's too coarse, coarse for me. I don't like them. Um, I guess they have their uses. Uh, I just don't like them because I don't really use a lot of hand files. For natural nails, I love this glass file I got from Lantern and Wren. Um, I am not really that up on files, period. Now, I do have some other files other than the glass file, and make sure it's a very good quality. And the later and run file, I really like. Um, Maniology had a glass file that I really liked. Um, I don't use them that much. I only use them on natural nails so that I don't tear anything up. Um, I do like this file. It's okay. Um, I mostly use that to take down um, when I'm doing someone's nails. I really only have a couple of girls that I do Gel X nails on. Most of them, I just give them a new gel polish manicure every two weeks, and um, that's pretty much it. I have a couple of ladies that get dips every other week. Those are a little harder to get off, um, but I do like this one. I love the banana shaped one. Um, these came from Sally's, and I know Sally's is back and forth with their being um, having things available even. Um, this, no color residue, whatever. Okay, this one is a coarse medium. It's an 80, or a, um, a 100 to 180. So that's more of a medium, and this one is a coarse. I rarely use this coarse side. Rarely. Uh, if I'm taking down length off of tips, and I'm just doing a new polish over it, I will kind of use this to take down the bulk. But generally, I use an e-file for everything anymore. Uh, these also came from Sally's. I really like this one. It is a 220, 320. 
super fine. Um, they call 220 a medium, like 320, and I mostly use sanding bands. Um, this one is an e-basket. You can get these on Amazon. But see, the grits are so different between each um, different company, so it's hard for me to say. Um, this 180 to 40 is more like this one. Um, the coarse side of this one is like this, and this one is much smoother. Um, it may be a, a lower grit, more of a coarse grit, but it's so smooth. Um, and that's the problem I run into. These, they're the same grit, but they're like, I don't know. They're not good. I don't really, the Sally's one, I just don't think that they have their grits right. I mean, I just feel like you kind of have to try and see what you like. I really do like the e-baskets for a hand file. Okay. That. Um, 180, 240. I just feel like I like these and I love this one. And it says 240, 220. I mean, I like these two. I trust these two for hand files. I don't like this one. This one I think is too coarse. I don't, I rarely use it. And that one is from Sally's. Buffers. I don't use buffers. All right, let's prep this now. All right, these are um, profilesbackstage.com. You, I think, have to have a, a license to get these. Um, but I really like these. These are a fine grit, and these are a medium grit. Um, I really, I do have coarse in these two, but I really don't use anything coarse. Rarely, unless I have like some glitter dips. I'm just using these to take off polish and to prep. E-files. Let's move on to e-files. Uh, this is from Melody Susie. I have a video on this and you can look and see. Um, I don't know. It's a couple videos back. A few maybe. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'll put the links. This one is also a lamp and I really like this. Um, I use this air -C all the time, but I started having issues with it and I had just bought it. It is a cordless the next one I buy is going to be a Melody Susie, I am sure, but I do like this. I do use this, but when this totally craps out, I have a spare. Diamond bits. I only use these to prep with, and then not always. I generally just use sanding bands to prep with, but I do like this one, the shape of this one. I think it gets around everything really well. This one I also really love. It is a very fine band. I do always have that link to Amazon and everything I buy from Amazon as far as drill bits and all that stuff is always in, in that little link. Uh, I do really love this one. It is really fine as you can see and it does have a bit of a safety on the end so it's not cutting or anything. I, I love the shape of this one, this tiny cone. It's best for me, and it's kind of your preference and what you like to work with. They all kind of do the same thing. That one will take off polish a little better than these diamond bands. These diamond bands, as far as I'm concerned, any of them, no matter uh, the shape, the round one, um, this one, I like this one too. I like that um, to get around, but I don't use it very often. I'm sorry, my nails are probably filthy underneath. Um, a round one, I don't know. It works okay, but I really just prefer this one for prep work. Um, I don't really like this. This is Melody Susie, and it's not that I don't like the drill or the bit itself, the ceramic. I do like ceramic bits, um, but I don't like the edge, the flat edge. Um, I don't want to cut anyone and that one is just too scary. There you go. Um, I would let, rather have a cone shape because they get very fine at the tip. So if you need a little more of a coarse, um, you can get, you can file off the bulk with this side of it. And then the tip you can use for the finer, 
Um, this is a safety bit, so it does not cut if you touch your skin. It's not going to it's not really going to cut you, and it is a really fine one. I know the links to these are in my Amazon link. Um, I'm supposed to earn a commission on that. Do I know? <laughs> Maybe nobody uses them. I don't know. Anyway, I do really like this one. I have used the crap out of that one. This one is same thing. It's a carbine, um, and it also it's okay. It's more of a medium. That other one was coarse. This one is okay. The barrel, again, I don't like that there's not like a safety on the end. Here is a flame bit. I don't really get any use whatsoever out of this, except when I do my toes to get the cuticle off around, um, especially my old broken pinky. Um, when you're looking for a drill, I, I always just recommend one that is going to lock. It's going to twist the lock instead of just shoving it in. Oh, um, it doesn't work unless it's plugged in. <sighs> Just turning that wheel and turning that wheel. All right, so I put it on pretty low, like a six. Sorry, I'm knocking stuff over with the cord. And um, this will also take off polish, but we're just going to prep. And it just takes a light hand. You're just going to take the shine off. That's it. This nail is bent. This is not going to hurt you. This fine band is not going to like hurt when it touches your skin. So I'm not, you know, taking off a bunch of nail. I'm just getting rid of, rid of the shiny. Uh, so same with the diamond bit. Um, and this is how, that was another question is how do you hold the client's fingers? I mean, that's just how I do it. I just move it around however I need it. If you want to go the opposite of the drill spinning. So if it's forward, it's spinning to the right, um, clockwise. Um, I rarely reverse it except when I'm using them on myself. Um, I'm not going to put, normally I would put base coat on, but I do always keep alcohol and I spray that with alcohol. And wipe it off with a lint-free wipe. Alright, since I don't have November's collection, I do know that it is nudes and browns. So I am going to use these two. Um, this one is ethical and go golden. Love this brown. And this one is the Inventor Glitter. This one is from last month's. Um, normally, of course, you're going to put base coat on. And I have used it, been using pretty much exclusively here lately. I am using rubber base. <laughs> I love this stuff. Uh, I can, when someone comes in for another polish, I can just file off the polish and get it to the rubber base, put another thin coat of rubber base and polish over it. That's all I do. So we're going to pretend I have a base coat on here. Oh, this stuff's so pretty. I know everybody was excited about some nudes. And wanting a nude collection. Uh, that's so pretty. Cure that. Uh, while that's curing, I am filming the advent calendar from Madam Glam. Should I give you a sneak peek on um, number two? Uh, no. Uh, and on my nails right now, this beautiful holographic is um, Hollow Night. And this is from a couple of years ago, their Ho 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 collection. So pretty. Perfect base for some nail art. 
All right, there is one coat of that, and I am going to stop there because I'm going to go ahead and pull out the Ethical and Golden. This brown is so pretty. And I'm going to do a little bit of a gradient with this. Just going to pull that down. Okay, so sticky base coat was the next question. So what to do? I leave the sticky on if I'm putting a coat of another polish on. If I'm doing any nail art, I generally just leave that sticky on. There is a beautiful fade. But I have different application brushes for different things. So like um, what I pull, put Builder Gel on with is generally the Madame Glam application brush. Or I also have a Maniology application brush I love. I think a lot of it depends on what is your price point? What is What can you afford? Um, Madame Glam has some great brushes. This one is very expensive. It is um, from Ger Germany. Kalinsky. Love this brush. It is a wooden handled, but it doesn't have a lid. I don't like that, so I have to keep this. Um, I generally don't like brushes that the lid won't fit on the end of. So, I while I love these two brushes, I don't have a lid that fits on the end, and I lose them. So that's the downfall of those as far as I'm concerned. They do have, this one does have a lid, and it's wonderful. I just, I want them to fit on the end of the brush. Um, Lantern and Wren has an amazing application brush. This one is from Lantern and Wren. I love this brush. It is not quite as expensive. If it's shaped like this, it's an application brush. You can buy cheap ones, you can buy several cheap ones, or you can buy a really expensive one and um, clean it really well and take care of it really well. De detail brushes. I have this a couple of different um, Libra brushes that I believe came from Red Iguana is where I got them. Love it. Such a tiny, fine detail brush. And it's short. I like that. I have several from Madame Glam. And I really like them. But this is my favorite because, as you see, it's kind of short when you put the lid on it. But the lid fits on the back of it and makes it long. I love this brush and I have two of them. I have a liner number 10. It is a little thicker. I, I love this one too. You know, this is a super fine detail. So... Um, I have several from Maniology that I love. This is a cleanup brush. This ombre. I love this ombre brush. I don't know where it came from, but I know it was cheap. And I really like the way it spreads out. And I like it. Um, I've kind of ruined my Madame Glam ombre brush. Putting it in the in the holder and I, I broke off some of the things. But ombre brushes, I want to spread out really well. And I don't know, this one doesn't spread out as well as this one that I think is just a cheapie I bought from Born Pretty. I really like this one. 
It depends on what kind of ombre I'm doing. That ombre worked really well with this one. This one, the cheaper one. Um, but this one is finer. I do like this one when I'm doing um, not glitters. So, again, it's kind of whatever you like. This one is a long, a long fine detailer. This one is good or was until I messed it up. See, that's my thing with buying expensive brushes is sometimes you end up messing them up. Um, so is it worth spending the money on them or buying cheap ones? I don't know. How much do you use them? I think these are awesome brushes and I use them all the time. Brushes do go bad. You do mess them up. Forget to put oil on them before you put them away. Whatever. That one is, again, because of the lid, I screwed that up. Clean up brushes, it depends. Anything that's angled is good. What do you like? Love this Lantern and Wren cleanup brush. I, I think this is my favorite by far cleanup brush. Um, it's a little wide. It's wide this way for sure. It's angled. That's my favorite to clean up. So I have um, rambled on for way too long about brushes and blah, blah, blah. All right. I'm getting ready to ruin this. This is so pretty. I'm getting ready to ruin it. I'll put some top coat on here. I don't know. Am I actually going to file this off? I guess. <laughs> All right. Again, I'm going to take the time to show you the advent calendar. It's a mess inside and I'm going to show you inside because it's all tore up here. Let me get up a little bit. Show you how cute this is. It's like a toy chest. It's huge. It has 26 items. I have not seen any of these polishes. They're, none of them are dupes. A, a lot of them are minis and that's fine. There is a full size. Okay, I'm going to do a little sneak peek just because, just because they may, I don't know. I don't think they'll be mad. Every box um, advent calendar has a full size base coat and top coat. That's not going to be any surprise or any shock. It's nothing new. So many new polishes that I've never seen before and some surprises I've never seen before. And I'm so excited. I can't wait till I can show you those. Best techniques and how to hold a client's hand or fingertips. I'm just holding their hands, their fingertips, and they're just sitting their hand there. I, I'm not, you know, if I have a problem, I'm going to say, you know, relax your hands a little. I don't really have that problem with anybody, but I'm just going to hold their finger like this. <laughs> and I'm going to turn it when I need to. And um, I've never had anybody complain about me hurting them. Uh I know that when I was going to, actually, I'm trying to think. I've never had anything done but my toes. I've never had my nails done at a shop. I always done it myself. So, but I've never had, I always ask, is, is that okay? Um, is that hurting you? <laughs> um, buff off shiny surface before applying certain gel polishes. Um, when to keep the in the sticky layer intact before moving on to certain gels. Okay, so never wipe off the sticky until you finish with your top coat is my general rule. If you're going to be putting on a sticker uh, like these, just stickers, wipe that off. Wipe it off before you put your top coat on. Wipe it off and put that sticker on. Uh, water decal, same thing. Wipe off that sticky first, then put that on. If you're going to be stamping uh, stamp it with the sticky on and see if it helps you. And if it doesn't, wipe it off. <laughs> uh, it, you know, you can take the stamp off. That's no problem. And if the sticky's not there, it's, it's okay. Well, sometimes sticky on the nail is beneficial for doing a stamp. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it doesn't stick very well or it, it smudges or whatever. Wipe it off with alcohol. It's still going to be kind of tacky. 
um, it's going to have a little bit of texture and then stamp. I think that's probably what she's getting at there. Um, like I said, okay, so with like powders, you're going to want um, no wipe top coat on to buff powders in, but under cure it. So if it says 30 seconds for a top coat, give it 15 and buff it in. It usually works a little better. And I put all that shit in one video. Should I? I don't. I don't really even want to file that off, but I guess I'm going to. I'm at 36 minutes right now, and I'm going to edit the crap out of this and try to keep it down to 20 minutes. But if it goes over, it goes over. You'll either watch it or you won't. Um, this is set at about uh, seven. So 7,000 RPMs. Really hate to get rid of this because it is gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? Um, our gradients, I usually like to do the dark at the end, but whatever. Um, here we have the fine band, fine sanding band. And I'm just taking off that polish. And you can polish over that. And if you're wanting to completely, I rarely take off all the polish. I take it down to the base coat, the rubber base coat. And I almost never completely soak off anymore. Um, maybe every six or eight weeks I will completely soak off. But otherwise, I just take off the shiny and the glitter. Um, especially if I'm going to go something darker. Now, if you're going to go something light, if they want something almost white. But otherwise, I just take most of the bulk of the polish off, especially if there's glitter, and I just use the sanding band, and that's it. But if you are going to soak off, um, you need to file off the shiny top coat for sure. I mean, take it down a little bit, get off most of the polish, but there's no reason to get through that base coat. And then I take a couple pumps of um, acetone. I got this from Walgreens. It says regular polish remover, but I have filled it with acetone, straight up 100% acetone. Um, I give that a couple of pumps and put that on the nail. This is a this is a gel tip, so I'm not going to soak it off. Um, and I fold the end in and then around. And foil works better than anything else I found. It um, works better than the clips or the clamps because it's foil. It keeps the heat in. I feel like that works better. And after like five minutes, by the time I've, I I just put them on one at a time, by the time I get to the end and the last, the tenth finger, I can go back to the first finger and take that off. And generally it is pretty much to where I can take and um, scrape it off. See, it's already it just barely on there and it's already let me scrape off. All right, did I answer all of your questions, Tara? If not, um, you know how to get a hold of me. Let me know. All right, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to look at my page again. Did I miss anything? Probably did, but. I don't know. I think that's it. <laughs> I'm sure she'll have more questions than she can ask me. If you guys have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask. And I will try to get to it. I always heart everybody's comments. So that they know I've read it. If I haven't hearted it, I probably 
didn't get to reading it, but I try my best to read every single comment and reply every, every single time. Thanks so much for joining me, you guys. Bye. You're me, Wolf. Do be Wolf. No, me. <laughs> <laughs> Go open your mouth, doggy. He's not impressed.